And it's time. I don't know if you guys ever watched the UFC, but I felt like being Bruce Buffer there for the main event of the evening. I think that's how it goes. Fighting out of the red corner, standing six foot two, weighing in at 220 pounds. Me. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Too much fun uh, here in my basement all alone while you guys watch me over stream. But we'll pretend like we are together, guys. It's good to have you here. My name is Tyler. This is the Hacks Motor Twitch channel. Or if you're watching this after the fact, you are on my YouTube channel. Either way, it is an honor to have you taking the time to hang out with me. And we are going to dive right back into the Red Team Capstone Network to recap where we've been. We got two more flags last night. We were able to get admin access to tier one infrastructure, which means we got admin on one of the servers. And we have actually a path mapped out in Bloodhound how we can get domain admin and the goal tonight, guys, is to get domain admin on the first domain, Court DC, and we'll see if we are able to do that. Now, I do have to retrace a bunch of my steps because uh, y'all keep resetting these networks, <laughs> so I, my persistence doesn't stay when the networks reset. So uh, this is a new network. I have to reset up my shell on the VPN. We're going to reset up persistence, but you can watch the process. And if you missed it in the previous stream, maybe you'll learn something. So the first things that we're going to do, guys, is just re redoing some of the things we've already done. All right. So this may be boring to you if you already saw this, but it'll be good practice, uh, honestly, for me and maybe good practice for you as well. So the way that we got persistence was on this VPN server. So let's go there. 200. I think I'm on 116 now. Yeah. Okay. There we go. And we just need to log in with the creds that we had before. So let's go to our trimental folder and we have our creds right here. I think it was password one at sign. There we go. And for those of you guys in the chat, let me know if everything sounds good. I'm assuming it does. If no one's yelling at me saying that they can't hear me. Um, but if anything does sound off, please let me know. I don't have any way to uh, monitor myself. I'm going to go ahead and don't save. Sounds good. All right, sweet. And good to have you, Ranger and Mac one double again. And uh, quite a few other people watching. If you have a Twitch account, we'd love to hear from you. Sign off in the chat. Let me know where you're watching from, why you're watching. If you're doing this with me, if you're just hanging out, either way is fine. And I will do my best to also pay attention to the chat. So if you guys have questions while we're going through this, want me to slow down, want me to attempt to explain something, uh, let me know and I'll do my best to pay attention to the chat. What we're going to do right now is abuse this process. I am not going to explain this a whole lot just because I've done this a couple of times on stream. It's at the right IP. It is. But we're just getting a simple reverse shell right now is all we're doing. Should work. There we go. We got shell and now we just need to stabilize our shell. T Stir says, hanging out, always learning a lot. Cool. Good to have you here, my friend. And Dat Bejan dude said, hanging out from Columbia, South Carolina. Fantastic. Good to have you here. Now, in order for our exploit to work, uh, in order to get persistence on this, we have to stabilize our shell with Python, which if we do, which Python, yeah, user bin Python dash C import PTY, PTY spawn bin bash like that. Okay. And then I recorded my commands from before. So if we look at our commands here, if you remember, if we do sudo dot L, we could see that we could run the copy command as sudo, which allows us to read and write to write the files. And what we were doing was echoing our public SSH key to the authorized key folder on the Ubuntu user, which is exactly how we did it before. So let's give that a shot. Hopefully that worked. At 10.200.116, right? It's 116.12. That's my network. Yeah. Oh. Add correct host key to get rid of this message. Offending blah, blah, blah key. Remove with this. So let's fix this real quick. Let's try it now. Mm 
Beautiful. All right, we got logged in as Ubuntu, which is basically our root user. And now we are gonna set up tunneling. And I know this is a question a lot of people had on the previous stream. So I'm gonna slow down a little bit uh, at this part and explain what we are doing. So if you look over here at our chart, let me get Twitch pulled up. If you look over here at our chart, we are on this external network right here. So you can see we have three hosts that um, although they have private IPs because this is a network on here for learning, of course, they're not gonna have real public IPs, but you have to think about these three hosts as being internet facing. And our challenge right now, since we are on these hosts that are internet facing, is we have to get through this firewall so we can attack the internal network. You can see I already own these and got the flags for it, but we are on this VPN server, and so that's our issue. How can we get our Kali Linux attack machine to be able to target these machines? And let me show you guys what happens. If I go here, and if I, if I try to, I mean, really do anything. So I saw some people trying to RDP to these machines because they have RDP open. All of it's going to fail. I can't ping them. There, there's no connection because they're behind a firewall. And I can't hit them from my Kali Linux machine. So what we need to do is set up port forwarding. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. One way that uh, I did it in the last stream, that was a little more complex, but also gives us a lot more freedom once we get further into the network, is to use a Metasploit to set up our port forwarding and our lateral movement. So that's what we are gonna do in this stream. And I will walk you guys step-by-step step how to do this. So first we are logged in as our Ubuntu user. And if I just go, I'm gonna make a directory with my try hack my username just to keep my files on one spot. There we go. So we have our directory there. The first thing that we need to do is get a meterpreter shell. Now a meterpreter shell is a special kind of reverse shell that we can catch with Metasploit. And that's the first step to really setting up pivoting and forwarding with Metasploit. So in order to do that, I wonder if I even have my previous commands here. I do, so you can see my previous command, although I don't think this is right. We have to have the right architecture, which is gonna be x64. And I also think I did um, staged there. I think that's staged. That all looks fine in order to generate our file. So what this is gonna do, I even type it out for muscle memory. Let's first go to our red team capstone. Oh, Marty. Hold up, CD try hack me. And I probably have a few files in here already. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove anything with R. Hope I didn't remove too much stuff. Yeah, I just wanna remove the reverse ones. And so we're gonna do MSF Venom. This is how we generate payloads. Dash P just means payload. So now we need to specify the type of payload that we wanna do. We're targeting a Linux box, which is x64 architecture. We'll do meterpreter reverse. TCP, L host is gonna be our IP. Geez, for it to connect back to. L port is gonna be the port, we'll use port 8080, that's fine. Dash F is the file we want it to output as, the file type, which is .elf. And then I always like to specify the port in my file just so I know what port it is calling back to. So step number one, let's go ahead and generate a payload and we are gonna send this to that Ubuntu box. While that generates, let's get MSF Venom open, or not MSF Venom, Metasploit. We can do the MSF console dash Q just for quiet mode. And let's rename some of these so we can call, we don't need this one anymore, that's done. We can close that out. This one we'll just call VPN SSH and that's done so we'll turn this into our web server where we're going to host the payload on and we'll do a sudo python 3 m hdv server 80. this is going to host a simple uh, web server so that we can host these files and download them from the victim machine and this is the file we want to download so we'll just copy the name there and from here we're going to do sudo w get http and then the IP of our Linux machine or attack box, depending on how you're connected to this, and then the file we wanna download. Okay, and now we have it. So we successfully transferred our payload to our victim box, and now we need to set up a listener through Metasploit. So back over to Metasploit here. 
we can search multi handler we'll use five you can see it exploit multi handler this is the one we want and if we look at our options there's a few different options that we need to set so first let's set our l host which is our listening ip and that's just our ip the one that we're calling back to in that payload we just created we'll set l port and that's going to be the port and then the one thing that I actually forgot when I was initially doing this and ran into some issues. Oh, did I close my commands? Let me get my commands open back up. CD, try hack me, CD, red team capstone and mouse pad, command notes. And so we open in the background. Yeah, let's restore it. Here is our payload right here. So when we set that payload, we also have to set the payload in our listener so it catches it correctly. So we'll do set payload and we'll just copy that in there. And then we should be able to run it. So we transferred, well, first we created our payload with MSF Venom. We transferred it to our victim. And now we set up our listener and Metasploit so that we can catch it when it executes. Let's go back over to our victim and let's go ahead and make that payload executable. Pseudo. And it's executable, beautiful. So let's go ahead and execute it. Fingers crossed that Metasploit catches it and it does. And you can see that we have a Metasploit session now. So that is good. Now what we need to do is actually set up our forwarding so that we can actually hit the internal network from our attack box. Now the way we are going to do that is, actually my notes pulled up on my other screen. I got this, the, the specific method I'm gonna show you, so to give credit where it's due is from Hack the Box Academy on their uh, pivoting, tunneling, and port forwarding aspect now i can't share my that part of my screen with you guys because hack the box academy will not like me but i'll walk you guys through how to do this do 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 so the first thing that we need to do is we need to background this interpreter session and you can do that very simply by typing background so go ahead and type background and we backgrounded our session and now what we are going to do is set up our socks proxy properly so we're going to use auxiliary server socks proxy like that let's look at the options that we have our server host can be fine we can leave that at 0.0.0.0, .0. when it's like that it just means to listen on all network interfaces our server port we're actually going to set to 9050 so we'll do set server port 9050 take a drink of water so you guys can catch up Set server port to 9050. We're going to set a version. This is the version of our SOX proxy to 4A, just like that. And then we are going to, let's check options one more time. We have everything filled out. Yep, we'll go ahead and click run. And that will start it. If we type options, we can just verify that it's running and everything looks good. We can type jobs to confirm that it's running. Let me get this to go away. And you can see there is our SOX proxy running right there. And now what you need to do is configure your proxy chains configuration file. Now, the place that you can find that is if you do CD Etsy, it's sometimes a little bit different depending on what version of Kali or um, the attack box or Parrot OS, whatever distro you're using, it might be slightly different. One way you can find it is if you just do sudo, mousepad or nano, whatever you wanna do and just start typing proxy and hit the tab key for tab completion. And mine's gonna tab complete to proxychains4.conf and we're gonna open that up. Type in your password for sudo. And here is what you need to set up. I don't know why in the past I commented this out and then just re-added it. But this is what you want it to look like at the bottom of your file. Sox4, your 127, loopback listener and the port we just set which is 9050 so you want your proxy chains for configuration file to look just like this if you're following these steps make sure you save it close it out jump back over to metasploit now and now we need to create our route so we are going to use post multi 
manage, not manager, manage auto route like that. And let's look at our options here. So we need to set our session. And the session is that meterpreter shell that we got. In order to figure out which session it is, very simple in, in, Meter or in Metasploit, you can type sessions. And you can see ours is session one right here. We have the meterpreter shell on that Ubuntu box. So we can set session to one. Options, we have our session set to one. And then we can also set our subnet. It might do it automatically, but we'll set it as well. So we'll do set subnet and ours is 10.200.1116.0. Should be fine just like that. And then we need to click run or type run rather. I got this error last time that it may not be compatible with this module, but it, it worked anyway. So I don't think it'll be too big of an issue. You can see it successfully adding those routes to our VPN and to our, not to our VPN, to our routing table. And now we need to run it for it to be active. So we'll do run auto route dash P. Okay, we should be good. We should have proxy chain set up. And now from our attack box, we can actually hit these internal servers. One very simple way that we can test this. Go back to my home, Tyler, try hack me or a team capstone. One simple way we can test this is I know that, for example, on all of these, they're running RDP, which is port 3389. So if we take server one, for example, we just need to append all of our commands with proxy chains and that will route it through the routing that we just set up in Metasploit. So if we do proxy chains, dash Q is just quiet mode, so it doesn't give us a bunch of verbose output from proxy chains showing what's being connected. If your proxy chains is not working, you'll want to remove dash Q so that you can troubleshoot what's going on. We'll do nmap, we'll specify a specific port, which is 3389, and then we will just hit that IP, I'm going to target server one, so 10.200.116.31, like that. And dash V for verbose. And because these are Windows hosts, Windows Firewall by default will ignore ping, so you have to turn off host discovery. Dash capital P, lowercase n, turns off host discovery. And you can see it is open. So from our attack machine, we did not have access to this before, but because we set up routing using the VPN server kind of as our entry point, we can now fully attack this internal network. Looking over at the chat, let me know guys if that was helpful, if that was confusing, but those are the steps on how you can use Metasploit. There's easier ways, like you could just do dynamic SSH port forward. It would be one way to do it. Metasploit is going to be a little more powerful as we kind of go deeper into the network and have different hosts calling back. Metasploit can almost serve in some ways as our a command and control server as we get deeper into this network. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to go back to what we were looking at before. So we have a user, actually an admin user, that we found. So long story short, we ran Bloodhound on the domain controller and we found some users that were Kerberostable, which we Kerberosted. And when you Kerberos an account, you're able to capture the Intel EM response. We cracked the Intel EM, re Intel EM response for one user and we got a valid password for a service account. We then learned that the service account has administrative access to server one and server two. And there was also a path that Bloodhound gave us in order to really pwn uh, the domain controller, which is our goal this evening. But before we take that path, there was one thing I wanted to do that I thought about during the day is we should run Mimikatz and dump the logon passwords and hashes of each one of these servers. And maybe there might be an interesting user logged into one of these servers, maybe an admin, and we can maybe do a pass the hash account or crack their hash to get access. So if that doesn't work, we'll go back to our Bloodhound attack path. But remember, for each one of these, there's multiple attack paths. So I kind of showed one in my last stream on how we can use Bloodhound to enumerate. We might go back to that, but let's go ahead and try to uh, do Mimikatz and see what happens, shall we? We can do proxy chains, Remina, like that, and... Let's get this open and let's log in to 10.200.116.31. We'll accept our certificate. And now we just need to throw in our username and password that we found. So if we go back to Trimento, I think 
Where did I drop this information? Here it is, SVC scanning and password one. Was it just password one exclamation mark? Is that what it was? I don't think I need to set the domain. This might be fine. Beautiful. And we are logged into server one right now as an admin. We'll have full admin rights on this box. Amoeba man first. Hi, Amoeba man. Good to hear from you, my friend. He said, Tyler, why not secrets dump via proxy chain? So malware directly on the server. So not AV flagging, dude, that's, uh, obviously a good idea. He said, sure. You are admin. So you can either disable AV or add exclusion, which is my original plan, but secrets dump is a lot more fun. Good point. And I actually think in my GitHub, I wrote a script for that as well. Let me, let me check my GitHub real quick. I think I have the syntax for that. Let's see, Kerberos, password spray, password enumeration, public scanner, do, 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 pass the hash as rep. Oh, maybe I don't. Okay, let's look up the syntax of secret stump real quick. We'll minimize this stuff and let's go ahead. We'll just call this Remina, open a new tab. We'll call this our terminal. Okay, can I just do Python 3 user live Python 3? Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> okay, is there not help built into it? Ooh, we could use Metasploit though, couldn't we? If it's uh, part of the Metasploit framework and we have proxy chain set up through Metasploit, I think that would work as well. Run without Python, okay. You guys think that would work? Either one would work, but doing it the uh, Metasploit way might be more fun. What if I go like this? Oh, maybe I should look over this. not installed i had this issue with the newest version of cali make sure it's not going for that one like it's not actually in the path in the newer version of cali is it impact at secret stump there that might be the syntax right there each each uh freaking version of cali throws me off it used to just be you could run secretstump.py, I believe in the terminal, like what Amoeba Man's saying, but yeah, I know the newest version of Kali uh, did not work. All right, so someone shared the syntax for me, the threat guy, thank you, my friend. So let's go ahead and try that. So first we need to make sure we do proxy chain so we can go through here and then we'll do impact it, secrets dump, right? Syntax, impact it, secrets dump, yeah. Like that, and what's the syntax? So we have the domain, which is corp dash the reserve dot loc, I think, and then our user, which is s svc scanner thingy, svc scanning. Svc scanning, and then our password, which 
It might not like that exclamation mark. We might have to escape that, but we'll give it a shot. And then at the IP that we're targeting, and we'll just target server one for now. Like that. See what happens. Overgrown Carrot said, you've been streaming a lot lately. Yeah, dude. So the reason I've been streaming so much is this Red Team Capstone Network by Try Hack Me is time limited. It is only out really towards the end of this month. I believe it goes business only June 5th. And so I my plan is to stream every single night as I work my way through this. With one exception, guys, and I was going to share this towards the end of the stream. Um, not this weekend, but next weekend I'm taking my daughter camping. So I'm hoping that we can complete this network before next weekend because I will be offline probably Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because I'll be in a tent and not near a computer. So we'll see if we can make our way through this network. And um, even if we don't complete the network, at least we got a few flags, but I think we will. I'll be on here almost every night attempting to work our way through this. Gar said, Seven said, how are you liking it so far? Dude, it's so good. The network's incredible, especially compared to like... Uh, OSCP, you know, kind of their training. When I took the OSCP, I paid $1,500 for 90 days of lab access. The networks were broken half the time. The VPNs didn't work. Support was bad. This is a breath of fresh air compared to that. And really, oh, we have administered a hash there. Um, there's a lot of really good things about this network. What I really like about it is the fact that there's multiple attack paths in order to compromise each part. What I don't like, well, actually what I didn't mind about CTFs is there's only one path. Sometimes it was an obscure path and if you didn't find it, everything else was a rabbit hole. Same with when you're studying for the OSCP. When I got into real pen testing, so right now I'm a web app pen tester for Rhino Security Labs. In a real pen test, the goal isn't just like get root, right? The goal is a very holistic security consultancy. You're helping the client build a better security posture. And like for a web app, you're looking at everything. You're not just trying to get RCE on the web app, but there's a lot of things that you're researching and looking at throughout the week. And what I like about this network is that there's more than one way. So if one way is broken or doesn't work, keep enumerating, find a different attack path. And that's what I've been trying to tell people in the Try Hack Me Discord who are having issues like, hey, if you're stuck, like one person said there's, they've been stuck for three days trying to RDP into one specific machine, like, yo, try something else, right? If you're stuck, try something else. Like when I do a pen test in the real world and something isn't working, I can't just stop for three days, right? The client is paying me a bunch of pain rhino. I just say a bunch of money per hour for me to pen test, like figure it out, dig into it. If your tools aren't working, figure out how to fix it or use a different tool. Extend your network timer. Good call, dude. No one's voted to reset this network yet, so that's good. Okay, so we have administrator. Um, I'm assuming that if this is administrator, we could pass the hash onto the domain controller depending on how they have their security set up. We can grab all of these for now because if we were doing a report on this and I haven't decided yet if I'm going to write a report or not, but we have a lot of, we have a lot of good stuff here. And I think one of these will get it. If this administrator account is like a local admin. Yeah. But if it's local admin, if they reuse the same admin password across different machines, we would still be able to pass the hash, right? is what I'm thinking. It might not work because that sounds too easy. And uh, knowing Amoeba Man, it's not going to be that easy. Oh, he just told me. <laughs> Amoeba Man said, Tyler, 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 try mental security is much better than that. You scrub. <laughs> I figured it was. <laughs> All right. Other, other machines, guys, that don't have as good a security, like I know a lot of the hack the box AD machines I did, this would be a this would be how you pwn it. You get the local admin, you do a pass the hash account, even with evil win RM, you pass the hash, you logged in your domain admin, game over, you win. But Amoeba Man uh doesn't like to make it easy for us. So 
we'll uh we'll see what else we find from here oh how about that Um, yeah, so we don't need to run Mimikat. That's kind of what we're doing now. We already have we already have admin access on server one. We can log we could do RDP, which I think I actually have an RDP session. Like we could turn off um A V on this guy and run Mimikat's no problem on the server. And uh, just sharing for you guys on YouTube who aren't seeing the chat, when I was sharing about like reusing the local admin account to log into the domain controller, Amoeba Man said, but you are not wrong. My last assessment, uh, password reuse of the administrator account was my path to DC. So what he's saying is in the real world, this actually happened. He got the hash for a local administrator account, which you can imagine is logged into a lot of things, maybe even the workstations, and he was able to pass the hash and log into the domain controller, and he was able to take down the domain. <sighs> Can we crack this, do you think? Also, it looks like someone else in the network might have given you DA by logging into server one with it. Is that what's going on here? The network hasn't even been alive for very long. Um, let me go ahead and throw this down. I mean, can I pass the hash with that? I don't know. Dash. Oh, I can't use that hash. And they're tough to crack. Gotcha. Yeah, let's try to crack it. And first, just for my own learning. Domain crash cash credential. That's what this is. Let's read about it a little bit so we understand what's going on here. Microsoft Windows stores previous users login information locally so they can log on if a login server is unreachable. This is known as domain cache credential, but in actuality, it's also known as MS cache or MS cache hash. It's sort of the u hash of the user's password that you can't perform hash the hash it, pass the hash attacks, which I'm doing with this type of hash. It uses MS cache algorithm for generating password hash and that are stored locally in the Windows registry of a Windows OS. These hashes are stored in the Windows registry by default. The last This is a badly written article. Metasploit helps the pen tester. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're not going to try to crack it because once again, for those of you watching on YouTube, you miss out on the chat. Here's here's what's going on in the chat. So they said the DC2, which is what we're looking at, domain cache credential right here. The threat guy said they're tough to crack, almost worthless of a hash. And Mimi Man said, yeah, you can't use that hash as is, but you could try to crack it. But then he said, I wouldn't. My admin passes are keep pass generated, so good luck. The threat guy said crack time will probably be years, and Amoeba Man said more like lifetimes. So we do not have elite cracking machine, so those hashes aren't going to be useful to us, but we have a lot of other stuff going on here. So, of course, we have our local SAM hashes. These might be interesting to us. We have, of course, our service scanning account, which we already have access to, and now we're dumping our LSA secrets. Uh, these would be passwords for the machine itself. Plain password hex. Oh, 
Oh no, a backups account? Is that a hash I can use? Um, if that's if the service backups account is a hash that we can use. I mean, we have some of the stuff up here, but the service backup account guys had DC sync privileges to the domain. So if we can get this to work, at least if I remember when I looked at the Bloodhound results, this can DC sync and that can lead to domain admin. And yeah, I think that is plain text. You're right. That's just the password. Um, Beautiful. Let's try to... Uh, let me look up. I actually wrote a script for DC sync. Once again, something I forgot the syntax for. I'll show it to you guys real quick. Do I still have mouse pad open? Here it is. Here's my script I wrote. And uh, let me get Twitch pulled back up. I close Twitch. One second. There you guys are. Uh, you can see my sweet thing. Yay, we no longer script the syntax for 15 minutes. You can see that came from being on stream, always screwing up the syntax for 15 minutes. We do have to change the syntax a little bit. We need to first do proxy chains, impacket, secrets, dump.py. And then we have our domain here, which is uh, corp the reserve dot loc, like that. Our username is our backup account. I'm just going to grab this and drop it into our other notes. So our username is going to be the SVC backups like that. And then our password is going to be this guy. Like that. And then our IP address is going to be the domain controller. 10.200.116.102, fingers crossed. Oh, I typed it wrong. What did I type wrong? Oh, it's not dot .py, I don't think. I think it's just secret stump, right? Uh, let me look over at the chat. Ish some said, has anyone completed the challenge yet? They have. I think uh, we have a handful of people who have completed the challenge. Haha, <laughs> we just pwned the domain controller though. Uh, maybe Matt said, maybe just to explain, there's a service running on that server as the backup account. So the password is stored in encrypted format for the service to work. Secret Stump will dump the dpappy keys, which can be used to decrypt memory and thus get the clear text password. And he said five users so far, which is in line with our completion expectation given the time it has been active. And Generalism said, isn't this the same method for the recent CVE for keep pass master key? And then Amin Man said, good luck with all 600, 6,000 of my AD accounts in the dump. Oh, shoot. Well, uh, I'm going to let it keep dumping because I don't know how the goal execution part of it works. We might need some of these users and their creds. Well, we can get them when we need them, I suppose. But here's our administrator. And this, we would be able to log into the domain controller. I'm pretty sure. So now we can, I'll stop this, honestly. What was the syntax for evil win arm again? I always forget which one of these is the NTLM hash. Is it the first one? We'll try both of them until it works. Might be the second one.
Mima said, why you just stop my lovely AD sync? Because <laughs> I don't want all 6,000 users. <laughs> At least not right now. I have a feeling, though, right? So the goal of this network is not just to get domain admin on both uh, networks. It's to do goal execution, which the end goal is to commit a fraudulent bank transaction using the SWIFT banking system, which requires two users. An error of type messages connection refused, connection refused. Do I not have the right NTLM hash? Or the right, that I grabbed the wrong key? Where did I copy this to? To this one? I don't know what I was saying. Oh, a goal execution, right? So the goal isn't just to pwn the network. The goal is goal execution with the Swift banking system, which requires a user. Gosh, dang it, I'm dumb. I need to do, oh wait, no, I'm not dumb. What am I doing? I thought I didn't do proxy chains. The goal is to submit a fraudulent tra bank transaction, which takes two people to confirm it. So eventually we're gonna have to like downgrade back to, um, users maybe on those workstations on one end users on a workstation on another end in order to like confirm that transaction so we might have to go back to that and get that something weird's going on here is my proxy chains acting up thirty three eighty nine My proxy chains broke. Why would that happen? Dude, Amoeba Man's probably making it realistic and like kicking me off the server. Um, let's do some very simple testing real quick. Okay, so we do still have a connection. So have a shell. Why did my proxy chain just quit? Does this connection still work? No. Let's just do dynamic port forwarding. Shall we? I'm trying to think of how I could troubleshoot this, but everything seems to be configured properly. Um, I mean, I could redo the process, but I don't really feel like doing that. Our session is still active. I mean, man said it should be back online now, should it? Let's try it. So proxy chains, MMAP P3389. Um, 10.200.116.31 dash PN to ignore host discovery and dash V like that.
weird. If something just went weird with our proxy chains, that's fine. We'll we'll do this a different way. And remember, this is what we were just talking about. Like when a tool stops working, figure it out. We'll just close all of our active sessions. And if we go over to this, uh, the dynamic port forwarding, what was the syntax for that again? I actually have it over here. That's going to be a really easy way for us to do it. Dynamic port forwarding with SSH. I'm looking at my notes over here. Confirming, setting up pivot, setting up to pivot. Let me scroll up. Where's the dynamic port forward? Setting up to pivot. Enabling dynamic port forwarding with SSH. Let's just try this one. So SSH D 9050 Ubuntu at 10.200.116.12 I ID RSA. Ha ha ha, I'm back, right? Make your tools work for you. One tool doesn't work, figure it out. And we just demonstrated how we can how we can do that. Now if I do evil winrm-h to see the syntax, pull this back up and we'll do proxy chains, evil winrm. And this is also guys why you need to know how to do um, the same thing but in different ways. And this is something I think the OSCP really emphasized for me Things are gonna break, especially when you take the OSCP. They're not gonna allow easy tools to work well for you. Kind of like Amoeba, man. They're not gonna make it easy for you. And some of the tools you're used to may not work or they don't allow you to use certain tools. So you really do need to figure out how to do the same thing in different ways. So if if you're port forwarding through Metasploit breaks, what's the solution? Well, we could do dynamic port forwarding. We could try chisel again. We could use S shuttle, however you say that. There's different ways we could have done it. This is a fast way that I knew how to do it, but different people would have done it differently. But having that ability to pivot on the feet is gonna be uh, really helpful. Let's see if this works. I may have grabbed the wrong thing, but we'll find out. Try the other one. Is that what? Oh, there we go. Boom. We pwned the first domain, I believe. Ha 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 ha. Beautiful. Beautiful work. That was the goal. We took down Corp DC. Amazing, guys. Teamwork makes a dream work. Let's let's get our flag, shall we? And we even demonstrated thinking on the feet and, and figuring out our issue as we went. Um, I actually have to, no, I think I can hit project brief. I don't want to actually give away the flags, but let's see. I have an authenticated to eCitizen now. So let's go grab all these flags that we need. So let's SSH is eCitizen at I'm not even, I forgot my network already. <laughs> what network am I on? I don't know. Not 52, is it 116?
Is that what it is? Okay, cool. And let's go ahead and register. Oh, not register. What am I, what am I doing with my life, y'all? Exit. Gosh. Authenticate. We already registered an account. Tenderbrain93. Let me grab my password. This isn't my real try hack me password, guys. So don't try to log into my try hack me account. Uh, let's submit proof of compromise. And we can do corp tier two foothold and admin. Let's just do both real quick. And then we'll go back and get the other flags as well. Zero foothold. Just core DC, right? We're going to call this Leet Hexor. Okay. So, what we need to do, I'm just going to type my command out over here. We are going to echo this UID. Into C windows temp like that we'll see if it works through winrm and you can see i forgot to do quiet mode for my proxy chain so we'll see that happen as we do this maybe not Maybe I have to drop down into like a regular shell, which was was RDP or anything open on here. We could evil win RM and pass the hash or not evil win RM X free RDP and pass the hash. We could. Huh, there's a few different things we could do. Can I? I think it's because I'm using win RM. I mean, man, confirm if that's the reason. I don't think I did anything wrong in my syntax. I think it's something with like, I'm pretty sure it actually says or Amoeba man said like don't use PowerShell, use command prompt when you do this stuff. So I didn't even see what services are open, but I wonder if we can RDP into it. Hold up. Oh, is the directory wrong? See Windows temp. What's wrong about my directory? Uh, where's my thing? Let's just go there. Oh, I know, but I did the full path when I echoed. So that shouldn't matter. We'll try it this way, but... Yeah, because there's my file. You guys see it right there, tenebrae.txt, um, but it's not working. And it's just because we're doing it with PowerShell. It, it should be an easy fix if we do it this way. Here we go. Here's what I'm looking for. So if we do proxy chains dash q for quiet mode x free rdp you administrator domain um pass the hash ip It's 
telling you, oh shoot. They have the restriction that's not gonna allow us to pass the hash in that way. I don't wanna change the password for the admin user. We could get like a shell, I guess, or can I just add a user? Yeah, let's do that. New AD user. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. What if we add our own user and make our user a domain admin? And that's more persistence, right? So new AD user. Okay, let's see if it did it. So if we do net user like that, I think. Okay, so it did create it. And now, how do I add AD group member identity? I think it's called domain admins, let's check. Um, net. Domain admin, so now if we do add ad group member identity. Aha, we just made our own domain admins account, although I never set a password for my account. You guys are gonna watch and like get on my uh get on my subnet and you're gonna log in as Tenebrae. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. Set a password for a user thing using the distinguished name. No, set a specific user's password. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Let's just copy the syntax. Okay, so set ad account password identity. And we don't even have an old password, so I think we can remove that. Okay, now what if I do I couldn't even remember what I sent my password to. My account's disabled. Account active, no, okay.
enable AD account. Account active, yes. All right. Ha 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 ha. I win. That's how you do persistence, ladies and gentlemen. You create your own domain admin account. And that way, if anyone else tries to RDP as the administrator, it doesn't kick me out because I set up my own account. Once again, guys, just demonstrating you have to think on your feet. When one way doesn't work, you should be able to think of another way. And you just get that with practice. No, that's not what I want to do. Now we have full GUI on the domain controller. And I can go into any machine I want now. Like I can I can RDP in all the workstations and I'm, I'm a domain admin. So I have I can get every flag now on this cor corporation because I made my own domain admin account and I have the password and everything for it. If I could just open command prompt, that would be a good starting point. See, who am I? Tenebrae93. He says you are one hop away from getting the first 16 flags now. Dude, I, <laughs> I might wait for tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see where I'm at. Let's get all the flags that I know I for sure have access to now. So if we go back to where was Citizen. So here's what we need to do. I think I already have my command here. Oh, did it not work? It said, unable to send email, then well done, check your email. Oh, uh, did I forget to confirm my email? Hold up. Actually, let me just check my email, hold up. Uh, you did not recreate your email after network reset. You're right, I didn't, freaking A. <laughs> I need to do that quick. Oh, Ranger said, I got that error too, but it will work. Oh, but eCitizen can just give you this flag directly off stream option too. Okay, I'll do that. I'll get till I get to that point, guys, and I'm in a, you guys are just going to look at my face. That sounds like an easy way to do it. I don't know what this is going to show. I'm going to jump off stream now. Well, not off stream, but I'm going to have it so you guys see my face Okay, I'm going on the flags now. He said, first verify your email as well. Okay, I'll do that. Right now, I'm just grabbing that flag. It worked that way, so I'm going to go drop that into Try Hack Me. Let's see. Flag for foothold. And I'll go ahead and... Can I go back? I can't go back. All right, I'm just going to get all the flags quick. Then I'll verify my email. I'm doing a very backward way, but at least gives me the, the flag ID now. Oh, uh, but I have to go back anyways. 
Oh, what would you like to do? Okay, now I can get email access. I can't show you guys my stream until I get the flag out of there. I'm going to verify email access real quick. It's created my email user right now. User has been successfully created. Repopulating mailbox. Please stand by. And then we'll finish verifying our flags. Now that I have this domain control there, though, I'm pretty sure we can abuse maybe trust between the domains. And I think that might be a meme, what a meme man saying. You're one hop away from getting the first 14 flags of a domain parent-child trust relationship here. That's my guess. It's still repopulating my mailbox. Felt good, though, guys. I'm glad. So this is... a. Uh, Day six, it took us six days to take it down the domain controller in the first the first section. But uh, that's, you know, maybe a little more than one work day because I've only streamed an hour to an hour and a half each time. All right, so now I'm back. Uh, the flag's still there, so I can't share my screen yet, but I'm going to go ahead and submit a proof of compromise. As soon as the flag is gone, there we go. The flag is gone. I can share my screen with you guys again. There we go. So we are going to submit proof of compromise for core tier zero admin. Please provide the host name, Corp DC, of course. And we can just grab this value here, copy. Throw it here and then grab this like that. Me man said taking that six days or about 1.5 hours each day. So nine hours at this point is really good. Thank you. He said my expectation is complete the entire challenge anywhere between seven to 28 active hacking hours. Yeah. And just being on stream causes me to slow down a little bit uh, just because I'm always backtracking or talking or explaining. And I don't know if you guys have never done this whole like streaming thing. It really is a trip. How how easy you can be thrown off just knowing that people are watching your every move and like watching the mistakes you make and you're like trying to pay attention to the chat and try to learn stuff as you go. It, it definitely takes some time to get used to, and I'm not fully used to it yet. I've done it a lot now, so I'm a lot more used to it than I was before, but it really is a trip. Like give it a shot sometime and you'll see how difficult it is what, what I'm talking about. And I think that's why a lot of people don't stream. They like record ahead of time and then post it because it takes away that, that live element. Ready to verify. Yes. Well done. Check your email. Submit another proof of compromise, which we have. The only things I don't have, I think, are... The core tier two admin. Can I do that from the domain controller? Like obviously if I have the domain controller, I have tier two admin as well. It may not work. Okay, that's fine. I'll RDP into that one then. Whatever. Yeah, we'll close that out. We have we have persistence. We have good persistence now. And so we'll just RDP into one of these workstations with our domain admin account we created. I don't know the password I set.
Why not SMB copy Echo directly from DC? Oh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. I already closed before I saw that. That would have worked too. That would have been a lot easier solution. I'm not a lead enough hacker to think about that right away. Overgrown Carrot said, I am not streaming a box right now that I just did and it needs 2FA. Utilizing OAuth tool, some default tokens that worked. However, fun streaming doing this would have taken an hour. Yeah. Your mind just doesn't work as well when you're on a stream. Once we get logged into this box, we'll be able to verify that flag that we don't have. And it was core tier two admin that I don't have. All right, so very similar to what we just did, users administrator tenebrae.txt, just with this line. Copy that, get this pulled up. Now, if you guys could like not reset this network, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> Take away all my work. I meant to open his admin though. Oh, shoot. Make sure to just log out so you don't leave DA creds in the workstation for someone to get. Good point. I didn't think about that. Someone is breaking the tiering model. Yes, I am. You shouldn't log into a workstation as a domain admin. <laughs> Dude, that's a really good point. I am breaking the tiering model. That's hilarious. Okay, well, let's do that before I forget. Okay, guys, I'm going to make you look at my face again because I don't feel like pulling up my email and configuring it. I'm just going to grab the flags of the way Meat Man showed me and get all my flags put in there. Then I'll show you guys what my network looks like. Please select an option, get flag value, and the ID of the flag I want to receive is four. There's my flag. And now I also want to get the admin access, get flag value, eight. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. All right, guys, let me show you what we have. All right, guys, don't look if you don't want a spoiler, but obviously if you're watching my stream, you must be okay with spoilers because you've been watching me work through this. But let me show you what our network looks like now. Here we go. So we have our corp dc we have we have owned all of this all this side of it we've we've pwned we set up our own domain admin account we have persistence we we are hackers we now have this root domain controller so this must be child dcs we have this root domain controller and then we have this other domain controller over here it looks like we have a couple of workstations which i would guess those workstations have something to do with um, our goal execution of making the swift payment we have this jump box right here which is going to that internal swift uh, web application that the challenge talks about 
So I think, guys, this is going to be a good pausing point for us. This is about how long I try to stream is an hour and a half. And my goal for this evening was to get domain admin. And we did. And we even ran into issues along the way. And I showed you guys how my mind worked and how I troubleshooted it. And we were able to work through the issues that we ran into. But we have domain admin on the first domain. I think we'll be able to get root DC by abusing um, domain trust is my first guess. And so... Uh, tomorrow night we will jump into it and tomorrow night we'll see if we can get root dc and bank dc because if we get root dc obviously we can get the rest of this so just like a movement said we're one hop away from getting 14 more flags we'll get those flags then we'll think through what goal execution looks like i have some thoughts in my mind but don't know if they're going to work till we get there and whoever is the silly person resetting this dang network quit resetting the dot 116 network i'm going to be mad if i have to reset up my persistence before i stream tomorrow so quit touching quit touching the network the network works fine if it's broken it's because you're broken right figure out how to fix it yourself don't just click the reset button it's still not going to work for you because you're doing it wrong even if you click the reset button over and over and over again but guys thank you for hanging out we are dummy admin we set up our own account please don't log into my account and cheat <laughs> um, but i will catch you guys in the stream tomorrow night and so same time tomorrow around 9 p.m central time I'll be back hanging out with you guys. So I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.